So the issues that we had was probably notwithstanding that the local prohibition team never registered the prohibition order at the land registry when we reviewed the legal pack. So even though when we did the review, there was nothing there to suggest there was anything wrong with the province. So they completely messed up their ends. That's point one of their error. But we did all of the work. We brought it all up to, to be habitable. I mean, the state the property was in, that's the sort of properties these guys need to be putting prohibition notices on. No heating, no hot water. There was no toilet. There was barely a shower in there. No heating at whatsoever. And a kitchen where you really wouldn't even dispose of a body if you just killed someone. That's how bad it was. But even though we'd done all the work and it was looking absolutely brand new, they sent an inexperienced prohibition officer around who didn't really know what an extraction fan was, didn't know that we'd fitted uh, wired mains smoke detectors and heat detectors. And she came up with a list of things that we still needed to do and half that list we'd already done. So started was our 18 month battle with the prohibition team to get this property signed off, even though that they hadn't followed the correct process. But after we'd done the work and they were happy with it, their former manager agreed that they would lift the prohibition order. So we decided to move the tenants in based on that conversation. A few months passed by, because that's typical of Norwich City Council, they don't touch anything for a few months and then they realize that they need to come back to you. They then wrote to us and said that we'd breached the prohibition notice that they hadn't lifted because we'd let the property. That's how ridiculous they are. And then they came up with a whole bunch of new stuff, including ripping out the brand new efficient electric boiler that we put in to do all the hot water and all the heating because they wanted gas. The tenants didn't want gas. We didn't want gas. In fact, UK legislation doesn't want gas. That's why they're ruling out new gas boilers. But good old Norwich City Council wanted gas instead of an efficient new electric wet heating system and after months of battling with these guys and thousands of pounds spent we ended up at a point where they wouldn't remove the prohibition of this unless we put a gas boiler in so we had to rip out the new one and put a older less efficient function one in and the tenants were so unhappy they've decided to move out which is a real shame one of the other issues we had here is that on the second to last inspection, there was two points of mold. One was in the kitchen above a rice cooker and the second was in a bedroom underneath what was effectively a defective gutter. And you could tell that it wasn't anything to do with the heating, anything to do with the insulation and anything to do with the work that we'd done. It was two causes outside of our control. But they refused to lift the prohibition notice until we rectified both of those points. So we got new gutter in in, and we got the rice cooker out of the kitchen. But even then, Norwich City Council didn't want to lift the prohibition order. They insisted that we produce a report from an independent party who specializes in mold and damp surveys. Before we instructed, we made sure that they were happy with the company because we know what they're like. They say one thing and do another. They said, yes, we had the report done. It showed absolutely nothing. In fact, it went on to say that they were being ridiculous. But instead of admitting defeat and that they were wrong, they decided to try and discredit the person who did the report. The saga just carried on and on. All the while, it's costing me thousands of pounds in reports and professional fees and lawyers' fees and bridging costs, because I had a bridging loan on this property. But eventually, we managed to convince them to send a new officer out, someone with a bit more experience, to check the property over. Now, this individual, we've known of him for years. He's been around for a long time and he was scratching his head pretty much the whole time wondering what the issue was. And after that visit, he signed the prohibition that was over. Now, was this project worth all of that hassle? I'll let you decide after I give you the numbers. So I paid 127 for the first and 120 for the second. I spent between 30 and 35 on each. I've had them revalued 150,000 for each of the flats and 120,000 for each of the shops. So 270,000 each one. But here's the real benefit. The shops are rented for £900 per calendar month each. The flats, £1,200 per calendar month each, no bills included. So my collective return for these two properties, 1400 1800 is £4,200 per month. So yeah, I guess the answer is, even though with all the red tape and all of the hassle that you have to deal with at these local councils and these local departments, Property investment is still paying off.